I got the first bunker hit. I'm fine. And remember we found with ballistics like a thousand yards away that it was going to be about a, a 1.5 to 4 inch deflection. But now here, with a 30 kilometer at, at the maximum range, you end up with a deflection of 164 feet or 50 meters. That's a huge distance of deflection. So if they don't factor in Coriolis, they're going to miss their target every time. They're going to miss their target every time. All right, so this is the uh, article, uh, world record for longest long range rifle shot was broken um, in Jackson, Wyoming. The world's farthest long range rifle shot was fired Tuesday, surpassing the previous record by nearly half a mile. Pretty impressive, huh? Uh, the previous record of four miles set in 2020 was defeated by a 4.4 mile hit, target hit in the high desert of Western Wyoming. The bullet took 24 seconds, can you imagine? 24 seconds to hit the eight inch bullseye. But breaking the record had been the goal for over a year. After set, setting the Wyoming state record of 3.06 miles in 2020, Scott Austin and Shepard Humphreys gathered a team of extreme long range enthusiasts to tackle the world record. This was the most challenging, difficult, frustrating, time consuming, and yet rewarding professional project I've ever undertaken since Humphreys. They began planning in late 2020. I'm sure you know where this is going. Uh, as always, they've got to mention in here somewhere, right? That we have to take Coriolis going to be required. Uh, then began months of testing and wide range of systems like wind readers, custom steel blankets, optics. With this kind of shooting, nobody has yet figured out how to get first round hits. This isn't the kind of thing where you just buy a new rifle, some ammo, and shoot the gun off. Uh, bunkers protected the spotters from being hit as they were scattered, blah, 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 blah. Um, keep going here. After several hours of number crunching and aim adjusting later, their 69th shot hit the bullseye. Austin and Humphrey said that while their hit is not scientifically consistently repeatable, this makes it extra coincidental that the previous four mile record uh, also landed on the 69th shot. Mm. Together we've spent over 1500 hours in research, highs and lows, blood, sweat, excitement, tears, with dozens of amazingly gifted people, businesses personally invested in the goal. To get Today we've spent over 1500 hours of research. So uh, you'll see here, for the shot that made the impact, Austin gave the shooter a correction of 1092 MOA. I have no idea what this is. Spanish to me. Uh, of elevation and 17 MOA, blah, blah, blah. As the wind value was the only one of several variables affecting the bull bullet's horizontal drift, spin drift, where the bullet angles in the direction of the spin, and the Coriolis effect, the rotation of the earth by which the target shifts position while the bullet is in flight, also play a role at that distance. That said, a one mile per hour increase in the wind would cause 26 feet more bullet drift, according to Humphreys. So, it, clearly they threw Coriolis in here and then I said all right let me email this guy and ask him straight up can I get your please sir Mr. Humphreys is that his name Humphreys Shepard something what is it yeah, I got to his name um Humphreys something yeah Shepard Humphreys I think so I said can you please give me your calculations for Coriolis effect because I don't understand it and I would love to begin understanding it you know, I don't want to be like some loser here uh, let me make sure that this is a place I can squish this and show you the email that I sent and the email he responded with. What do you think he said? What, what do you think? He's got a good, uh, a good read on this. So you'll see here, he says, to start out the email, we did not take into account the Coriolis. Hmm. It's, it's, cool. it's important that you include it in that article, though. Because we got to prove to people that the Earth is spinning, and these guys just hit a target 4.4 miles away, where the bullet was traveling for 25 seconds, and yet they were able to hit it without taking Coriolis into effect. And he says, uh, as much of that is lost in the weeds with respect to the wind, temperature rising, constantly adjusting elevation, all the other things. The bullet's flight path is over 2,500 feet above line of sight. There's a lot going on up there, and we were unable to predictably compensate for it. 
Uh, if it had been an absolutely dead calm day, it definitely would have been one more variable we could try to address. Mm -hmm. But no, nobody takes it into account, right? And then he put here, not a flat earther, which I never said I was. So I don't know if that's just like a little joke or something. But um, yeah, he says, we have discovered at three miles and 4.4 miles that what the wind is doing on the ground or at the peak of a nearby 500 foot hill does not do a good job in telling us what's happening way up there where the bullet is traveling. So I guess because the bullet drops so much, you have to aim 2,500 feet in the air. Crazy. Uh, but I thought it was funny. But they, they love to throw these things in the articles as if it's uh, a fact, and then you just email the guy and say, hey, can I get your calculations? I just would like to see them. Oh, we didn't take it into effect. We didn't take that into account. We just, uh, we don't do that. So don't let anybody tell you sharpshooters do when the people who have the very record for the longest shot ever, they don't even take it into account. Don't even take it into account, and that's uh, hilarious to me. Hilarious to me. All right, let's close that one down. See the email. Right. So that and uh, that's uh, Mr. Humphreys who answered that email. So let's go back to where we were.